Hey everyone, this is Ben Pierce from Urban Vinyl Daily's weekly wrap up. And again, we are here at Corey Helford Gallery and I'm here with artist Liz McGrath. Liz, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine, how are you? Good, uh, so we've been walking around Corey Helford and we obviously caught you and we've been looking at your pieces. Could you tell us a little bit about um, what inspired Dark Howl? Um, I kind of wanted to put together a group of pieces that could also tell a story within the pieces. So I kind of did all these little miniatures and then I hid little little um, things in the miniatures. So in each, each of these pieces that have the miniatures and on the outside of some of the pieces, it all fits together to tell kind of this Arthurian kind of scavenger hunt tale. So to get the whole story, someone would need to have would need to buy all of your pieces to get the entire story. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes, that's, and yeah, yeah that, that was basically the, how it works. <laughs> so within each of your pieces, there's the, obviously the miniature story and some of them, some of them have a lot of rhinestones, a lot of bling, something to uh, distract the easily distracted uh, if light hits it. So I guess for preparation, what kind of went into making this body of work? Um, a lot of hours of <laughs> gluing. Uh, my friend, uh, Krista Collins, a little shout out to her. Uh, she, um, she really helped me glue, like, that's 50,000 rhinestones, and I really didn't know the undertaking of it, and we, we didn't sleep. Like, we just worked on it for like two months straight, just gluing, and it's, there's still more that need to be glued. And, um, and yeah, so a lot of it was, uh, let's see, the process is first I make the armature, and then I either cover it with Magic Sculpt, which is a two-part resin epoxy, or various other things. Sometimes it'll be polymer clay, sometimes it'll be air dry clay. And then from there, I'll either airbrush it or spray paint it, or depending on what I'm gonna finish it with. Um, and then I put on the final touches, like varnishes, gold leaf, or, or whatever. <laughs> So obviously the show opened on November 5th, and we, we missed the opening since we're kind of two weeks late. So how was the opening? I was like so behind. I dropped the, the last piece. I was still working on the pieces like half an hour before the show, and I was so tired. I really don't even remember the opening. It was kind of a giant blur. So, uh, But it was, there was a lot of people here, and it was fun, and uh, the other artists are great, and so um, it, was, it was fun. We'll assume it was a great blur, not like blocking out of your memory. Uh drunk in the corner sort of I you know like the whole, well I was very drunk in the corner but I just kept you know thinking oh my god there's I still have to do this and this like it was hard to let everything go of all this stuff and and also you asked me the inspiration behind the pieces mm -hmm. and that was kind of the storyline but I never finished the storyline <laughs> so I never got to do the whole thing that and so I was trying to figure out a way to like anyways tie it all in and it never it never really tied so this sounds like a to, to be continued for your next art opening. So people need to attend multiple art openings to get the entire big picture. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the bottom line. You got to be there in the flesh. So for uh, this time around's body of work, which like which pieces like are you most attached to that you just put kind of put like most of your heart into, or that speak the most to you as far as like how they came out or kind of the mm -hmm. direction they came. I think. I think with this show, like I've done a lot of shows in the past where you end up trying to fill the space and you and you, there's always inevitably a few pieces that get left behind. So my motto with this show is no pieces left behind. <laughs> so everything I kind of just, I think everything I got really attached to and spent way more time than I probably had, which is why I didn't sleep. So no, I think, I think all the pieces, I was, I was pretty happy. I'm, that's why you caught me here still kind of cleaning you know, it's it'll it's never ending. I don't know. I don't I don't think I have one that I like more than the others. I think all of them. Yeah. And and this is actually the first show that I can say that about. So for like the different mediums, is it difficult for you to go like back and forth between like the fur leaves or like the very smooth resin or like do you do like the like the texture in batches and then the smooth stuff or is it just kind of free flow? Do what you do. Um, well, I kind of try to, uh, I have like a new kind of studio set up, so before I used to have like, like a couple different rooms, but since downtown got gentrified, <laughs> and my Skid Row place that was 300 bucks is now 2,000 bucks, I have one room. So it was difficult not getting some of the dust and particles of like the uh, foliage mm -hmm. into the other stuff. So I did have to kind of break it up, but overall I just kind of 
sculpt, you know, go through a process of building armatures and sculpting and then doing all the painting and then just cleaning a lot in between. So that was that. But it's, it's hard for me to go from drawing to paint to, to sculpting. Mm -hmm. So if I, so I didn't really add any of the drawing or painting, which I'm not very good at anyway, so. <laughs> so this, the show ends December 10th, right? Yes. So obviously we encourage everyone to come down. So how can people follow your work or like your websites, your Instagram or Twitter or anything like that? How can they find you and follow you and I, see what you're most up to? I, um, I'm really bad at social media because it causes anxiety for me. <laughs> but, um, but I do have a website, which I'm finally updating. And, um, and I have an Instagram. I think it's Elizabeth McGrath Art. And a Facebook, which is the same. And then another Facebook that's Liz McGrath 666. But I think I, I have too many friends on that one. So mm. I don't, I'm really bad at that stuff. I don't really know. But I am working on the scavenger hunt. And if I do get it together before the 10th, I will put it on my website if I ever get that done. OK. So are there any other art galleries that we should let people know about? Or is this it for a little bit, and then you're going to hibernate for a second, and then back at it? Or is there this something is else? It. <laughs> Um, I do have a show in August of next year in Australia, and then, and then my next show will be here again. So. And this is my first show here with them, and uh, I really enjoyed working with them, so I'm going to do another one next year. So, Liz, thanks for taking time with us. Obviously, we're here at Corey Helford Gallery. It's a three-room show. Please come check out her work and the other two rooms worth of work. Again, this is Ben and Liz McGrath at Corey Helford Gallery, and thank you for watching the week weekly wrap-up. This is Travis Likens from Token Nerd Podcast, and I'm here today to tell you something about sponsorship. That's right. Token Nerd now has a sponsor. The fine folks at TenaciousToys.com, your source for designer toys, pop vinyl, original art, and more, are now our sponsor. And guess what? As a part of that, you can get 10% off your next order at TenaciousToys.com by entering the code TOKEN10 at checkout. That's right, 10% off. And not only are they giving you this code, they're also going to be sponsoring many of our token nerd giveaways in the next coming months. So make sure to follow us at token underscore nerd on Instagram to catch our latest giveaways.